check it out over 2300 miles in less than a year guys so far this bike has been riding awesome no issues the only issue I've had is the screws near the kickstand and near the tensioner next to the bolt in the rear axle those guys have to constantly uh, tighten up here and here these guys have to constantly tighten up almost every ride just for safety checks this panel I don't know if it's because I'm leaning the bike on the left side because that's where the kickstand lives this part of the panel seems to be popping out. I've co contacted Delfast and I have a little crack here in the side panel. They said they're gonna start a warranty claim, so I don't know if I'm gonna get one for free or what. One of the most annoying thing is this plastic that came with it, I can't get it off. And I don't wanna scratch the paint trying to get it off. So the grips, they're still holding up. I use the throttle a lot and I find sometimes I'm pushing out. So when I throttle, I start to kind of push out my weight towards the right and that pushes the grip out. So you just gotta make sure you keep an eye on that and pop it back in. But I don't think these grips will need to be replaced for quite a while. The headlight always has seemed crooked to me. And I don't know if I did it wrong on the install because you have to kind of hook up the horn and the light and the head stem all in one. It's starting to get a little rust build up there. To get something to remove that. Let's see. So the seat so far is pretty comfortable. I still haven't installed the two-seater. I really wish I didn't get that two-seater. Right now I have a Topek rack connected to it and I really wish I got the Delfast rack. And there's a lot of confusion about if there's a rack or if it's welded with the bike. So the rack would replace this triangle that is holding this seat up and so we have this part plus the rack and there's screws in here you would have to undo all these screws take out the side panel and take out the battery and then install it from the inside out i believe it's not too bad if you're mechanically inclined i wouldn't want to do it personally myself but i'm sure it's not that big of a deal fastest I've gone on this so far was around 52 53 miles and that's with wind behind my back and going downhill this front fender I still can't fix in terms of getting it aligned straight because of the brake house So after 2,300 miles, I've only had to get one pair of brakes, the rear brakes, replaced. And I contacted a mobile e-bike company, in the, and they're located in the Northern Virginia area, just to build a r rapport with them, see how they did it. And it's pretty simple. I could do it myself, but I might use them for bigger projects, such as if I need to replace a tire, I won't be able to do that myself. The furthest I've gone in one charge was about 80 miles. I still haven't gotten, I have not had a chance to do a full range test. Um, sometimes when you turn the bike on and off, the alarm doesn't go, does not make a noise. 
but I have not figured out how to set it to off myself. This mirror, I really don't like the mirror to be honest, but it's more of a safety feature because I don't know if you can see, it has a signal on the mirror, which is cool, but even better, it has a signal on the front, which is very helpful. So when you're turning left, traffic knows what you're up to. I don't think I need one on the right. I can just use my right hand to signal if I have to. And the rear light, I have it connected to the seat stem. I use zip ties instead of the nuts and bolts. You'll find that if you use the nuts and bolts, you're going to have to retighten them almost every ride. The lights have brake lights, which is cool. You squeeze the brakes, the light on and off, and you got signals in the back. And I used to, you can, this Y does extend out further. So if you get a two seater installed here, a rear rack, or if you want to install it to this rack, you can. Uh, I had this installed to this rack at one point, but then I changed it, and I'm glad I did because this is actually my second one of these. The other one broke. This is only supposed to hold 20 pounds, and I think what happens, that's in a normal bike context, like holding 20 pounds at normal bike speeds. And I don't think it's meant for higher speeds than normal bike speeds, to be honest. So if you see here, I fortified this whole thing. Um, and this is if you need a rear rack and you don't have one from the company and you just need a quick fix until you get one. I mean, it's 50 bucks. It's not too bad. Do a walk around. So everything's holding up nicely. Again, my biggest thing is I wish this was bigger. I wish I had gears so I can pedal harder at faster speeds. But this thing rides amazing, guys. take her for a ride so first off you get one of these you get a pair of fob keys to go with it and you push the start button to turn it off it's going to make a annoying noise security's on so if you try to move it now it's going to make an alarm system go off now I'm going to turn it off and I'm turning it on pretty loud process Alright, let's start off on level one with the throttle. Now when you have a electric bike, people can't hear you, so you want to make sure that you can be seen. Alright, so this is level one. I'm pedaling at 13 miles an hour, nothing's happening really. Now I'm in level two. That's taking me up to 15 miles an hour and pedaling's doing nothing for me. Once again, wish we had a bigger chain ring or gears. So here, you would be patient. And ride it out. 
and get up to level three. Now we're gonna start cruising. 22, 24 miles an hour, 25, 26, going uphill. So at level three, you feel like you're going fast enough not to annoy anybody. Level two and one, you look cool, but you're going slow. You're going to still piss off people for being in the road. But if I go to level four, I'll be like among the drivers. There's the e-bike right there. That's how you ride on level four. Gotta get more space to go to level five. Be back in a little bit. Wants to go to level five real quick. Here we go, level five. Can we beat this car and not die? Yay, no doubt. Always ride level three and below in neighborhoods. You don't need to be going 30 miles an hour in here. But yeah guys, so far no real complaints. Now, you do have to be careful. This is the charging port right here, as you guys can see. You put the charger, it's really weird. I'll do another video on how to do it, but you connect it and twist, and the base of it actually, you can twist, which is not a good thing, because if you keep twisting it, the charging port cords they're going to eventually snap i believe so be careful of over tightening things there's two things that you can over tighten the cap it's like your gas cap so be very gentle just make sure you twist it on just enough where it stays on because again this thing will keep moving if you keep twisting it it will keep twisting but that's not a good thing
So this guy, I have to constantly tighten. I used to have to constantly tighten these guys, but that's because I have this guy attached to it. So make sure you take this off as soon as you can if you get one of these. It's going to rub back and forth on your cable. And it's just going to be annoying. It's also going to loosen up your bolts right here. So I have not gone on a big trip to West Virginia yet. I plan to soon. I'll do a video on that. And if you guys look back here, here's your different modes. Right here, this is set to throttle only. So you pedal and you throttle. If you go to zero, then that means the throttle or pedal assist, they will both not be activated. You're just gonna to have to pedal yourself. Just kill the mosquito. And then there's a second button with the same symbols, but that controls the amount of speed that you're uh, capped off on. So you got eco mode, sport mode, and insane mode pretty much. Mindset so that you can go the full potential 50, of course. I did a... Uh, ride this through the rain once on accident a storm crept up on me and uh yeah i had to hang out at a gas station for a little bit and then ride my way back home and i dried it off immediately and i actually hit one of these buttons and it went to zero so the next day i went to test it out and none of the, the throttle nor the pedal assist would work and i was kind of freaking out until I came here and I checked that the button was on zero. And then that was fixed. Thank God. Tires, after 2,300 miles, still look great. The motor still tight. Spokes are still tight. I am noticing a little bit of rust buildup here. And I don't know if I can do anything about that. I don't think I can get in between the cracks. I do notice some either scratches or hairline fractures on the tension arm. I don't know if that's such a great thing, but I have to keep my eye on that. 